All right, welcome everyone. I am Scott Ewart of Scotty's Blog. Today I have some wonderful guests joining me to talk about an international music initiative in support of COVID-19 relief. Joining me is Matt Smith, resident of Columbia. Hey, Scott. Who led this initiative, as well as fellow contributing musicians, Devin Heritage from Edgewater. Devin. Hey. And Jamie Miller, also from Columbia. Hi there. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so look, Matt, I want to start with you and allow you to provide some background on this initiative, where the idea came from, and how it's evolved up to this point. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, first of all, Scott, thank you so much for, for having us. This is just a wonderful opportunity. Um, so it all kind of started back in, back in March, as you can guess. Um, I, I play in a couple of bands in Columbia uh, for the last few years. One is called Third Light, which is like a three-piece acoustic group. And uh, the other one is Toast, which includes Jamie, who's on the call now, as well as um, Emily, Ben, and our, our guest singer, Becca. So, um, you know, since March, we're trying to figure out how, how can we continue to um, collaborate and, and work together um, with, with live music shutting down. And um, I, I think aside from an outdoor um, session at Jamie's house, where, where we were able to get all four of us together in the main main group, we really weren't able to, to have everybody together. So, um, so we were looking at different mobile applications to, to continue the process. And um, I forget the name of the other one we looked into, but we, we've eventually settled on BandLab. And uh, it's, it's actually a free application that as of October, yeah, there it is right there. Um, as of October, it has about 22 million users so it's a uh, it's it's a worldwide application, and uh, you know we started to get everybody um, from the band involved, and it's it's a wonderful platform to share song ideas and riffs and, and things. So um, you know Jamie and I, for example, we would trade different um, different ideas. So um, Jamie, I think there was like one of them was the blues song, when I'm gone, or you know you would upload a drum track. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we'd start to stack ideas from, from there. So we had a few different um, song ideas. I would upload, you know, rough song titles based off of breweries, like I called one Hysteria, which is actually on the album. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it was just kind of a organic process at the beginning where we were just, just, just you know, the, the core group was basically collaborating. We'd start to invite, um, other friends and things. And I think it was back in August, after getting more comfortable with the tool, um, there, there's something called forking, where you can upload a song um, to the public community in BandLab. So by that, I mean, any user can actually um, integrate their ideas into it. So uh, Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the first one we did this for was Aslan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we had a, a acoustic, you know, riff idea that we uploaded, and it had like Alice in Chains kind of vibe to it. And uh, we, we didn't have any vocals or, or lyrics or anything, so we put this hashtag that said needs needs lyrics needs vocals. Um, and within a few days, we actually received a few submissions from uh, strangers <laughs> on BandLab, people that we've never met. Um, one guy from Texas who, who's actually on the album on a couple other songs, David Lee Rendon. And um, we got a submission from Gustavo Prida, if I'm saying his last name correctly, from uh, Argentina. And he, he did this whole vocal in Spanish and it just blew us away. We were like, this is, this is unbelievable that, you know, we can create music with somebody, you know, across the world. So, um, yeah, yeah. And that's actually, that's him right there. <laughs> So uh, we've we've actually developed a friendship. Um, uh, I'm in a little uh, '90s cover cover band with him now. We do a few other songs virtually. Um, so so yeah, we you know we we started to meet people that way. Another another song that I, I just mentioned earlier, um, "When I'm Gone," which is like a blues a blues thing that Jamie started uh, back on. Um, we uploaded that and. Eventually, we got a um, submission, another uh, person that we didn't know from Australia. Um, 
he's called RJS on Bandlab. He uploaded this incredible lead guitar solo on, on our blues track within, I think it was within two hours. So, um, you know, a lot of it was just a happy accident where we were getting um, people to contribute. And, um, and of course my cat is trying to invade my space, which is great. Um, so, <laughs> so um, you know, we're, we're going through this and we're, we're thinking, okay, we're already getting um, people just, just randomly from all over the world to, to add, add tracks to it. So what if we continue this process and we actually make it more of a formal, formal structure? So um, I remember, <laughs> pardon, pardon my cat. I remember, um, you know, walking around outside and the, this idea just hit me. I was thinking, well, there's the Foo Fighters record, Sonic Highways, which is, um, you know, an album where Dave Grohl is recording music in various cities across uh, across the United States with different musicians. And I was like, well, we have this tool at our disposal where we can just connect with people anywhere. And what if we just continue that and and try to get the other continents? We already have three, so why not, right? So um, we, we started to look at the different um, the different tools in there. There's like an explore option, um, a community group where you can search. It's almost like match.com for musicians where you can search, um, search by location and by profile. So we started to target it. We were like, can we get somebody from Europe? Can we get somebody from Africa, um, Asia? And, you know, between using those tools and just another happy accident, people would continue to add stuff to our songs that were from Europe. Um, this woman from the Netherlands sings this, sings this great vocal on, on one of our songs and um, it, it, it just started to materialize. And the, the last component was Antarctica. Um, we weren't sure if that was possible. We, you know, we, we just figured we'd give it a shot. So I emailed every um, research station I possibly could to see if somebody happened to um, have an instrument with them while they were on site. And we actually got two different um, musicians Amar and Stein, uh, again, I hope I'm not butchering his, his name, um, that were, um, yes, they, so this is an article that the Polar Foundation had um, put out for Amar. He's a, um, a process engineer from, from Belgium, and he provided uh, classical guitar to, to our song Manor Hill, which is another, another song named after a local brewery in Howard County. So, um, so yeah, it was just uh, just a, a, a wacky idea that we had, and um, you know, the everybody from from Toast was on board. Uh, we started to reach out to other people. So Devin, who's on the call now, I was in a band with him um, in the mid two thousands called The Cause, and uh, it was just great to to reconnect with him musically again and get him involved. He plays bass on two songs. Um, huge. Um, huge help with the with the communication and marketing aspect uh along with jamie they both did a lot of um like producing and mixing on this stuff too so uh yeah it was just the combination of i guess good luck and um you know having having a good idea that we can we can get people um excited about and and now you 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 finished the album and released yeah. it yeah you want yeah. to talk about that for a second yeah, absolutely. So the album is, um, I guess we're calling it volume one because we're hoping to do more of these. Um, that's our website right right there. So our band name is a little interesting. It's Intercontinental with the seven at the end, if you see there, um, to, to signify the seven continents, of course. So this is an album that we, we wanted to make available for streaming for free. Um, you know, we, we certainly didn't want to make any money off of this. This is just a, a idea that um, you know, we, we wanted to put together if, if we could generate any, any, um, income for charity, um, or proceeds for charity, I should say that would be a plus. So that's, uh, that's kind of what we ended up doing. We, we talked about it and it just made sense to do, um, the, the COVID, uh, general fund, which is something that GoFundMe already has, um, already has online. So we just basically, um, you know, we're directing anybody to this 
to this um, site. So um, you can you can donate directly, or you can purchase uh, purchase our album, which is available on most digital stores. So um, you know iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, and then any of the um, the proceeds that we get after fees and taxes and things would would just be directed to that. That's that's so. that's most excellent. Um, so uh, let me let me switch. Um, we we'll switch gears a second, um, and I want to ask um, Jamie and, and and Devin some questions. Um, so, Jamie, you were in the band, uh, are in the band Toast um, in the DC Baltimore area, and um, Devin, you had been in a band with, with Matt Pass, so you all know, uh, you know each, uh, you both know Matt, <laughs> um, we, you know, which had to make collaborating a little bit easier, I would guess. But from a musician's point of view, and and using um, this band lab thing, how how difficult is it collaborating online with uh, with a project like this? It takes a, a, a firm sense of a firm enough sense of where you wanted to go with the song, what you were trying to accomplish, some sort of structural sense of the song. Um, but it also required enough flexibility and humility to recognize that when someone from a foreign country who is struggling to speak English with you by texting back and forth, when they add something and it changes the direction to kind of let it sit with you for a little while and figure out how to incorporate that and maybe even change the title of the song, change the lyrics in the song, change the structure in the song. Um, so it, it was it was really on Matt to be as open-minded as possible to let his songs be reinterpreted and re-presented. Um, I think the biggest thing was when you send it out to musicians, they hear themselves from beginning to end and they play or do whatever they're adding to the song beginning to end. So it puts it back on us to communicate delicately that for the song structure and for the sake of the song, we need to be pulling back a little bit, dialing back, either dropping the volume down or cutting segments out and supporting the overall song. So it was a, it was a process that none of us had ever worked through before, um, but it was, it was exhilarating. It was a, it was a lot of fun. How about you? It, it's definitely a trip because I mean, I kind of came in later than um, I would have liked to have. I just, you know, Matt was telling me about this forever and ever. And I, I kind of finally got my act together and, and uh, joined up in the fall. But I mean, the first song I did with them, you know, the, you know, percussion and bass are married, you know, in all songs, you know, they got to work together. They got to integrate together. I've always been in the same room with my drummer. Like, where are you going? And kind of watch. And the first song I did, I'm literally laying tracks in with a percussionist in, in Japan that I'm never going to meet. Right. And, you know, you, you get into their headspace and it's just, it's unlike anything I've ever experienced. Um, you know, it's okay, where's he going? Okay, that's different. That's interesting. And, you know, as a bass player, you, you just you listen to the drums so intently. It's just amazing to think I'm literally listening to a guy, working with a guy that doesn't speak my language. I'm never going to meet him, and he's on the other side of the planet. Uh, so that's just, I mean, that's the capability of, you know, the platform, the band lab, and just, you know, what you can bring to the table. And, I mean, it's, I always kind of think of it like all these vectors that were coming in from all over the world and just – you know, centering down into Columbia, Maryland, where, you know, you know, Matt for the most part, and then Jamie and me a little bit more, just, you know, making a soup out of all these different, you know, ingredients that we're getting from all over the planet. And, you know, I think the production side of it um, is, is amazing. I mean, it's, you're, you're not in the same room. You're not like, hey, let's re-record that. You're, you're really blending everything together. Yeah, um, so 22 musicians, seven different continents. That had to be a lot to juggle and, and, and within 12 different songs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and just to build off of what Jamie was, was referencing too, um, we would get some submissions that were totally unexpected in a good way. Um, Brianneke uh, from the Netherlands, she added this vocal to, um, the, to the song that ended up being So You're Different, which actually Devin plays based on that one. And uh, it was just, you know, European style, almost like a pop vocal that I was not 
expecting at all. And she was another one that just happened to add music to what we had. Um, it was, you know, we made it forkable or public for, for that purpose. And um, it, it took a second for me to step back and say, wow, this is, I have to like sit with this a little bit and reinterpret my initial thought of what this song would sound like. Um, and uh, Manor Hill, the last song on the album, which has every continent represented, that was a lot to put together, as you can imagine. Um, we, we tried to recommend that people just just play throughout the entire song and then we, we will, you know, splice and make edits so that everything can kind of breathe a little bit. So, so, so that's yeah. a good segue. So I'm going to play 30 seconds of that song for my listeners. Great. Thank you. So I hit the 12 buttons I've got to hit to make that happen. That's just a short clip. I thought I'd share that, you know, with anyone watching this today so that they had an idea of, uh, you know, the music you guys are creating uh, that you have created. And of course, that one having someone from all seven continents, I had to kind of. <laughs> that's that's uh, definitely the culmination. There's a reason that that song's last on the record. And, you know, towards the very end, I remember Matt and I, you know, talking about, hey, how are we going to order this? Because the genres are all over the place. Um, and we really tried to kind of follow COVID. And, and, you know, we think it kind of tells a story. Like the first song we put first, cause it's, you know, the end of it is anxiety ridden and, you know, and it kind of creates a sense of anxiety and fear. If you kind of see the flow of the music, we kind of, you know, it's kind of almost like a sunrise and it's, you know, anxiety and sorrow. And then we try to kind of move into more of a, you know, a rebirth and a, and a kind of a happiness and, um, you know, more positive outlook. So, you know, the album tries to feel in a bit, you know, kind of like 2020. Um, you know, I, you know, I think people experienced emotions throughout this year that they never even knew existed. And, you know, the, the songs definitely go from kind of hopelessness and sorrow to, uh, you know, positivity and kind of overcoming. And you kind of feel that throughout the record. So, you know, the fact that 100% is going towards the COVID-19 um charities you know the whole song is kind of wrapped up in that you know i'm sorry the whole album is wrapped up in that you know whatever we whatever we want to call that we all went through for the last you know pretty much year well you know um the 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 name you know the names of the song the the you know there were obviously two of them that quickly caught my eye and you know manor hill this is what i thought of um, right away, and then hysteria. This is what I thought of right away. You know, bringing that local flavor into it. <laughs> well, yeah, it. It. I think it was Devin that said it. This is an international twenty-two musician band filtered through Columbia, Maryland. Um, I think Jamie froze up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but just to, to, no, it's okay. But um, yeah, just to add to add to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, looking at placeholder titles for songs that just breweries are like, they just always have some of the coolest names. So I'll say, oh, Hysteria, that makes total sense for what Devin was just talking about. Um, but to that point, you know, we want to continue with this, with this project and, and do another record um, you know, pick a different charity um, and expand, you know, the genres even more. So we actually have over 40 people that are now signed up through Band Lab. So we've, you know, we've gotten additional interest from other um, musicians that want to participate. We're, we're really trying to broaden the horizons for like the different genres that we can do. So uh, it's really exciting to, um, you know, to branch out, to, to expand the scope a bit. That's awesome. Uh... I, I, I love the idea. I love the fact that the, the, the proceeds are going 
to uh, COVID-19 relief. I love the fact that you guys are pushing, you know, obviously, you know, if, if you're not going to do this, do this, you know, here's the link directly on your website to the COVID-19 relief fund. I really love um, that. I, I, I love the, you know, idea of, of 22 musicians, seven different continents. That's just, and it all coming, like you said, filtered down through Columbia, you know, brings it that, that local flavor that, you know, I like to, to report on on the blog yeah and that i mean that's what we're going through now i mean just kind of getting it out there we want as many people to hear it you know one song's not your cup of tea the next song might be i mean it's it's you know a lot of my family members like oh what's it sound like i'm like it's all over the place um you know the last time matt and i recorded a, a, an album was probably 2017 and we were literally pressing cds putting them in press kits and sending them off to record labels and that's totally different you know, and, and so the world we're operating in, trying to get it out there, trying to get it heard uh, in this digital world is, is completely different. Um, and we're kind of feeling our way through it. And, you know, the more people that can hear it, you know, the better, you know, not not just selfishly because we think the music's great, but also just because of what it's doing. I mean, it's it's a it's, it's 100 percent proceeds going towards, uh, you know, COVID-19 charities. And that's something that Matt got all 22 people to agree to. I mean, he put it out there this is what we're doing with it. And everybody was on board. I mean, it's a, you know, a real testament to the management that, you know, mostly all Matt had to do bringing this all together. Well, you know what, Matt, if you can never get all 22 of you together on a zoom call, I'm happy to host it and, you know, bring every, help bring everybody together. That, you know. that sounds great. I think we should do that. Look, any final thoughts you want to leave with the listeners today? uh for me i just again thank you so much uh scott for this opportunity and and we hope that um you know anyone that's watching and listening to this uh you know has has uh, taken something out of this and, and are interested in in uh, listening to the record and and like devin said you know first song you don't like there's there's uh, 11 more in there that have a, a wide variety of of influences so um we're just we're just so excited to um, to continue developing this to see where it, where it goes from there. Devin, Jamie, any last words? Go listen to the record. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and support. Oh, happy to. And look, I wish you guys the best of success with this initiative. Um, I think this is great. I'm more than happy to help shine a light in the little bit of way that I can um, to our local community. Uh, I'm also hopeful that you know at some point in the near future we'll get you know things will get back to normal where band we can actually see you guys in person <laughs> see your bands <laughs> um, locally that would be really nice at some point in the near future yeah uh, crossing my fingers that that happens all right gentlemen thank you again for joining me this morning uh for all the listeners uh know that there will be links to the website uh to various articles and uh about the initiative um in the upcoming blog post and in the videos all right this is scotty Signing out. Thanks.